The following is a selected video from VideoMathTeacher.com, where you can explore over 10,000 videos, print out practice worksheets, find proofs and discussions on many math topics, and explore related videos. Try VideoMathTeacher.com today. Let's solve the following differential equation using separation of variables. We're given y prime equals xy over x squared plus 1 given the initial condition that y of 0 equals 2. We'll first solve this differential equation and find a general solution, then use our initial conditions to find a specific solution. To begin, let's write y prime as dy over dx is equal to xy over x squared plus 1. Our goal using separation of variables is to multiply or divide both sides of this equation so that expressions containing y are on one side and expressions containing x are on the other. We already have x over x squared plus 1 on the right, but we do have the variable y. So we'll multiply both sides by 1 over y so that we can get the variable y on the left side. Also, we'll multiply both sides by a dx so that we can get expressions containing x on the right side. So we'll multiply both sides by a dx. By doing this, the y's on the right side will cancel and the dx's on the left will cancel. We're left with 1 over y times dy is equal to x over x squared plus 1 dx. We now contain all the variables that contain y on the left side and all the variables that contain x on the right side. Next, let's integrate both sides of this differential equation. We recall that the integral of 1 over y dy results in the natural log of the absolute value of y. From integration, we also pick up a plus c. On the right side, to integrate x over x squared plus 1 dx, we'll do this to the side and find a result and then replace this into our current equation. So in a sidebar, we'll write down this problem of the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. To integrate this, we'll use a u substitution. We'll let u be the denominator. So if u equals x squared plus 1, then du would equal the derivative of x squared plus 1 becomes 2x dx. In the numerator, we see we have the factor of x, but we do not have a 2. So we'll divide both sides by 2 for our substitution. So we get that 1 half of a du is equal to x dx. So in our problem, the x squared plus 1 will become u, and the x dx will become 1 half of a du. Our problem switches to the integral of 1 half of a du over u. Since 1 half is a constant, this can be written outside the integral, and we'll write this as 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. This is again the form of natural log of the absolute value of u. Of course, we had a 1 half in front, and since u is equal to x squared plus 1, this result becomes 1 half natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1. So this becomes the right side of our differential equation. 1 half natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus another constant. We see that we have a constant on both sides. These are not the same constants. So we'll label our first constant on the left as constant 1 and the constant on the right as constant 2. If we were to subtract a constant 1 from both sides, then we're subtracting two separate constants. A constant minus a constant will be, still be some sort of constant. So we'll write this as plus some capital C representing any constant minus another constant. The rest of our differential equation becomes natural log of the absolute value of y equals one half the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus one. This could be the form of our general solution of this differential equation. However, Let's solve this equation now for y. To do so, we'll use logarithm properties by writing 1 half the number in front back as a power. So this becomes the natural log of the absolute value of y equals 
the natural log of the absolute value of the quantity x squared plus 1 square rooted raised to the 1 half power first plus c. And as we said, 1 half becomes a root. So this becomes natural log of the absolute value of y equals the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x squared plus 1 plus c. Next, we'd like to solve for y. So if we assume that both sides could represent the exponent of a power, we could use these both to write these as e raised to our left side equals e raised to our right side. That way, we recall from logarithm properties that e to the natural log cancel out as inverse functions. So we get the, the absolute value of y. And if we assume that y is a positive function, we can even lose the absolute values. So the e and natural log cancel, we'll lose the absolute values to get y equals. On the right side, we have e raised to the natural log of, if we're finding the square root of an expression, then again, we can lose the absolute values because the square root will only return positive values. So we'll lose the absolute values, writing this as natural log of the square root of x squared plus 1 plus some constant. Using laws of exponents, we have e raised to one expression, and if we were adding two expressions in the exponents, this results when we were multiplying bases. So we have e to the natural log of square root of x squared plus 1 multiplied by e raised to a constant. In our first expression, e raised to the natural log again cancel, leaving the square root of x squared plus 1. e, which is a constant raised to a constant, will become another constant. So we're multiplying this by a constant, or instead we'll write this as a constant times the square root of x squared plus 1. So a general solution to our differential equation is that y equals c times the square root of x squared plus 1. We can use our initial condition that we were given, that y of 0 equals 2, to find what the constant would be in this scenario. So if we have that y of 0 equals 2, this would mean that when x equals 0, y is 2. Let's plug these values into our solution to find c. So y would be 2 equals our constant c times the square root of x is 0 squared plus 1. Simplifying 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1. So we get 2 equals c times the square root of 1 and the square root of 1 is 1. So we get 2 equals c times 1, or that c must equal 2. So the specific solution to our differential equation is y equals 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1. So this is the specific solution to our differential equation.